Well, welcome to Nitro in the year 2000. And this was the Nitro. I never got like angry watching this or exasperated or frustrated or anything. But by the end of this, it was so abundantly clear, not just why WCW died, but why major network television, major cable television would not touch pro wrestling for another two decades. Yeah. Th this killed everything, man. And you, you know watch I, it, go and you understand. You know what I got out of this was two things. I'm going to give the positive and the negative about Vince Russo. The positive is he was a tremendous heel. He was a great heel character on television. If he'd only been a heel character on television, I would have been fine with him. The problem was he was also writing this shit. And when I wrote Death of WCW, we never really fingered one person as being fully responsible because there were a lot of people that did a lot of stupid things. Okay? It's complicated, yes. But you know what? When this show was over, it really hit me that the second run of Vince Russo was the one that put this ship into the iceberg. After this second run, there was no turning back. It was no. done. Okay? We and, mentioned... And hold on. The key to this second run is this guy made the show all about himself. That's true. The entire run was all about getting one person over, and that was Vince Russo. And him doing so, that run is what killed this company. So really, you can almost finger him as being wholly responsible for the death of... De I won't do it, but man, when this show was over, I, I strongly considered it. We mentioned when Sid was champion in that uh, segment in between his two runs that the show was not that bad. It could have been saved. Done. It's dead. There's no hope It now. cannot be saved. It is unsalvageable right now. So WCW Monday Night Show number 247, also June 12th. Of the year 2000. So here's what happened at the pay-per-view. Horace helped Hogan. Hope Horace helped Hulk Hogan beat Kidman. That's not a mistake on my part, even though I mumbled. Horace, the heel ref, helped Hogan beat Kidman. The Flair family helped Ric Flair beat David. Vampiro lit Sting on fire. And in bigger news than all of this, Bill Goldberg turned heel. Excuse me. Bill Goldberg turned heel? Their biggest star, the most popular the guy they have, the guy who still had fresh matchups with like everyone on the roster, was made to be a villain and presented, presented as someone you should boo. So two quick things about that. Number one, they had, with the exception of Ric Flair, he was old. They had one young guy who was over. One. One guy. He was so over that when he wasn't on the show, his fucking truck was over. Yes. So he comes back, and the first fucking thing they do is turn him heel? Yes. Okay. When WWE turned Steve Austin heel, it was a really, really stupid thing to do. But I'm actually even more angry now because those motherfuckers had a template in WCW turning Goldberg heel, and they still turned Steve Austin heel. This is mind-numbingly stupid, dumb fuckery. Is what this, this is, is. This is way, way dumber than Austin turning heel. I actually understand Steve Austin's own personal mindset, where he was afraid he would get steel and had to do something new. I get that. There was no one, no one, who thought Bill Goldberg might be stale at this point. Well, there was one guy. Russo, I guess. <laughs> yeah. A limo arrives. Russo and Bischoff are smoking cigars, and Goldberg is with them. So we cut to the announce desk. Last week, Ric Flair tore open Vince Russo's shirt and began to chop him. And Scott Hudson had a line about apologizing to everyone for putting that body on TV. And so as punishment... Scott Hudson must do this entire show topless. Yeah. And what was funny about it was he wasn't even embarrassed. He's just out there with he, no shirt he's on. He's like, doing his job. Eh. He's pudgy and pale and very hairy. Much hairier than I would have guessed. And he's just calling the show like normal. And it's one of those things where 
it may have been funny they put him on camera like that once and then took him off and brought him back. But when your announcer is standing there with no shirt and a tie, a tie over no shirt, we're supposed to be, we're supposed to care about anything that happens in the show when the whole thing is to, is so, so clearly a joke. Why, why should we bother? <laughs> this is the least of my problems on the show. <laughs> There's more. Shivani, I would like to add, by the way, I would like to add that this show is not available at video.f4wonline.com, so don't buy the service to see this, but I also am doing this show with no shirt on. Oh, how about that? Because I am here in the loft in my beautiful studio here at Cannon Beach, and it is easily 200 degrees in this room. There's no AC. The windows have been closed all day, and it was 85 degrees. And I came up here. I am sweating my balls off. I'm nowhere near as hairy as Scott Hudson. I want to throw that out there. You're much leaner as well. I, too, am doing this show with no shirt on. You're much leaner. You may be as pale. I'm not sure. Uh, no, 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 no. I'm not. So we get the Russo Bischoff promo. There's an extreme close up uh, on Bischoff as he talks. As you hear the crowd cheering, it's security running back and forth in the background. I don't know what was going on, but it was a highlight of the show. So here's the story of why Goldberg turned heel. I can't wait. The millionaires were all jealous that he was the future of the company. That's it. That's the story. Goldberg says every cutthroat in the back tried to knife him, and while he was out with an injury, the crowd dared to cheer for other people. This is stupid. This is all very stupid. Kevin Nash comes out, curses a lot, gets not bleeped. That's about all that shit I can listen to. I presume this was bleeped in real life. These people are tired of listening to your shit. Says you don't even know who made you. Sting made Goldberg, Scott Hall made Goldberg, Hulk Hogan made Goldberg, Flair made Goldberg, I made Goldberg. He said, how, Kevin? <laughs> well, it was funny that he was right about every name until he got to himself. Well, that too. Who was the man who killed him. Well, that too. That, that, uh, my bigger point is, he's basically saying all these guys jobbed to you. They lost to you in fake wrestling matches, Bill. That's why you're over. So Nash goes to hit the ring. Security stops him. I'm almost positive Eric Bischoff was screaming, knife him at security. Well, it's funny because I wrote, shoot him. Because oh. the cops are out there and he's beating the shit out of the cops. And I can't figure out why the cops aren't doing anything about it. So eventually they cuff him. But Vince Russo demands, instead of being arrested, I want him released into my custody. I'm not sure you can I'm do that. Almost positive the cops won't do this. Russo books Kevin Nash versus Bill Goldberg for tonight. Madden says, man, this is just like Godzilla versus Megalon. All I can think of is, man, you just compare this to the worst Godzilla movie. That's very appropriate. So he was right. Yes. Actually, this, this is much worse than Godzilla versus Megalon by the end. Jarrett runs into the cat backstage, says, I want to defend my belt against Hulk Hogan right now. So the Shat still has power? I believe at some point the cat said he is commissioner, but he, his Jarrett says this. And the cat says, "Can I do that?" Okay, so he does it, and now, that's that. I want to know. I mean, I guess I guess it was a plot, but I, I couldn't figure out why Jarrett the heel is demanding a match with Hulk Hogan tonight. I, I guess the whole idea was I'll hit him with a guitar, and then he won't be able to do the match, and then I won't have to wrestle him with the pay per view. But I mean, can't do that at the pay per view. Like, you only have one more guitar. It's got to go tonight. <laughs> yes. Yes. So backstage, the cops have Kevin Nash in a cop car. Vince Russo is telling him to hang out there till he's ready. And then he turns to a young boy. There's a young boy backstage. I don't know, 10, 11 years old. We are told this is Hunter, yeah. Kevin Nash's nephew. What a coincidence. I don't know. Hunter. So... Russo's telling Hunter that Nash is going to get a beating. Scott Steiner comes out to chase Vince Russo around. In the process, elbows Hunter right in the head. The first of many incidences of child endangerment on the show. And all I can think of was, this Nitro takes place in a world where Scott Steiner is a babyface. 
I've been saying this for weeks. I don't think. And this now world... Bill Goldberg's a heel. Yeah, I don't think this world really existed. I, I feel like something went wrong in the timeline somewhere. We, we, we jumped the time stream somewhere. I, we I, a, a I'm, false pretty reality sure. I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty. Do you know how much better I would feel about the world if I learned this was a false reality? <laughs> well, or that we got out of that reality. Yes. The Mama Lukes are apparently both hardcore champion. Yeah, Eric won the title, but somehow the Mama Lukes have to decide who gets the belt. And of course, you'll never guess which guy gets it. I'm more concerned with how he got it. Rather than um, think of all the ways you could have two guys decide which one of them is champion. What's the very worst one? I'll tell you the worst one. One guy has to go to the bathroom really bad. <laughs> That's what happened. So Johnny the Bull is stuck in the bathroom. Vito, for reasons I cannot fathom, locks him in there. Well, because he wants to be the champion. Well, he was disposed anyway. He wasn't coming out anytime soon. So it's Vito versus Terry Funk for the hardcore title. They brawl here. They brawl there. A random security guy takes a chair shot right to the head. Funk falls through a table. They hit each other with chairs in the ring. And Vito hits a pile driver through a table and wins. So the point is... Vito took everything Terry Funk had to offer. Within the rules of a hardcore match, he fought valiantly and nobly. He was the better man at the end. People are cheering, and one of them says, as a matter of fact, many fans are applauding Big Vito's efforts here. So Funk presents the belt to Vito. He shakes Vito's hand. He turns his back, and Vito lays him out. Yep. Everyone write that down for a little bit here. I would like to add that when I was watching this match, it was like they had a hardcore match, and, I mean, Funk's beaten everybody for weeks and weeks and weeks and weeks and weeks and weeks. Bischoff finally gets the belt off him, underhanded means. Uh, Vito ends up with the belt, and they do this big match right here. And, in fact, Big Vito proves that he is the current king of hardcore by beating Terry Funk in the middle of the ring. Terry Funk then endorses him. And as this happened, I thought, I actually like this. But there's one problem. It's Vito. Of all the men to pass the hardcore torch to in World Championship Wrestling, they chose Vito of the Mama Lukes? Well, I don't know. The cat is backstage hunting for Hulk Hogan. I can only imagine that he would like the opportunity to hunt for Hulk Hogan more here in 2019. Oh, my God. Then we had my favorite thing on the show. <laughs> really? Vampiro is in the back, and apparently he has an emperor he has from Star power. Wars. There's a fucking guy in a robe and a hood, and you can't see him. And, and Vampiro is asking him for advice, and they're chit-chatting. And I'm not making this up, everybody. Whether it's the higher power or the Emperor, or Dr. Claw, or whatever hooded villain you've ever seen in whatever genre you're watching. Has there ever been a fucking higher power that sounded like a 20-year-old soprano? <laughs> no. This fucking guy had the highest, most childlike voice. And he's supposed to be the big bad dude that Vampiro's bowing down before. I was non fucking crying. Non-threatening, non-imposing, non-intimidating. Dude. This was ridiculous. So Vampiro says the icon known as Sting is no more. And the the Emperor here, who, by the way, did you mention that he's got like the steel grate carved into flame behind him? <laughs> it's just fucking so dumb. No, he says. Last night was just the first chapter. Tonight it continues. There are still, still more souls to be punished and purified. So a couple things. Had I not discussed Linda McMahon 30 minutes ago... <laughs> This would have been the worst promo of the night. More, do you realize this is just the exact same thing Vampiro and Pentagon did in Lucha Underground? <laughs> That's where Vamp got it. Vamp loved. Maybe Vamp looked back and thought, fuck, what's that thing I did in WCW with Sting? That's right. There was an emperor played by a little boy. I'm going to bring sensei. this back. What do you call sensei. him? A master. A master. Yes. Kevin Nash tells... Of all people, Scott Steiner died. Please keep an eye on my nephew, Hunter. He didn't just tell Scott Steiner. 
He told Scott Steiner and his freaks. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Shane Douglas comes out for a promo. He's rambling something about taking out the wall, having a partner who was exiled from WCW for reasons that sucked. That's his exact words. He brings out Buff. We are told Buff Bagwell was suspended for unprofessional conduct. To which Mark Madden says, you know, if you pick your spots right, unprofessional conduct can go a long way and get you places in world championship wrestling. He's not wrong. I have a new Scott Steiner's babysitting Mark backstage. Madden here after yeah, looking back upon Mark Madden, he was much better than I gave him credit for being at the time. He has some highs and lows, but yes. So Buff cuts a total babyface promo and says he has unfinished business with that pain in the ass colonic. As in chronic, of course. So it's chronic versus Buff Bagwell and Shane Douglas. We are told that Chronic is the top contenders for the World Tag Team titles. For for $1,000, I could not have told you who the World Tag Team champions were at this point. Um, I figured it out by the end of the show. Hold on, I gotta think. Is the answer on this show? Because I just watched this show. They did not wrestle, but I believe they came out later. Huh, I am fucking baffled. Anyway, this match was absolutely horrible. And <laughs> literally... Shane Douglas came out and introduced his partner who had been gone for 30 days. And the very first thing that happens when they have their match is they fucking can't get along. Yes. And it was Madden, I believe, who said that these guys just got back together and they're fighting already. Yes. So among other problems with the match, Shane cuts they're a horrible. heel promo. Shane cuts a heel promo. Buff cuts a babyface promo. Chronic have clearly been babyfaces, but Buff makes the babyface come back against them. And then Shane tags himself in, gets pinned with a double choke slam, and then he fights with Buff. So here's what happens, everyone. Shane and Buff bicker, but then they shake hands, and Buff Bagwell turns his back. Shane, by the way, is standing there with brass knucks in his hand. And Buff turns his back, and Shane lays him out from behind. For the second time in 15 minutes, there's a handshake, and then one guy ambushes the other. I can't believe that fact. It's that should be in your finishes report. It may be. I forget. The cat and Doug Dillinger argue about something, and the cat is waiting for Hogan to arrive. <laughs> no, Shat wants to know, Doug, where's Hulk Hogan? He's supposed to be here by now. And Doug goes, dude, that's your job. This made Shat very upset. Cat is now in charge of transportation. Well, I mean, he's... The point is, Doug Dillinger is merely the head of security. I see. Shat's supposed to be the GM, and Shat wants to know where everybody's at. I see. Autocracy. It's a lot of fun. Or bureaucracy. That's what I'm looking for. Bureaucracy is a lot of fun. Yes. Me and Gene interviews Kidman, who hears... <laughs> Fuck. Kidman did not, in fact, retire Hulk Hogan at the pay-per-view, just for those no. of you wondering. If you're wondering, yeah. Kimmon hears that Jeff Jarrett will defend the title tonight, and it says, well, they're going to need a special referee, and he leaves. What I loved about this was he was supposed to hear that they were doing Hogan versus Jarrett and then cut Gene off, but he cut him off before Gene finished announcing the match, so he jumped his cue. This was very bad. Speaking of very bad. What in the... Oh, actually, I did figure it out by the end. So Paisley and the artist formerly known as Prince Ayaki are having a press conference. I'm going to change my name to the artist formerly known as Brian Alvarez, so it can be Paisley and the artist all over again. Sure. Paisley says he's now just going to be the artist. Everything's going, and it's fine for us, something this stupid. And then Paisley is called upon to act. I'm not going back to watch, but I think her acting here may have been worse than her wrestling against Survivor Jenna. I'm not sure about that. Hey, what's going on under there? She says, there is an old man under the table. Somehow he got under the table and apparently between her legs without her noticing. He declares he is hungry for pie. So when this happened, I had absolutely no fucking idea what was going on. And this fucking guy comes up from under the table. And all I could think was, why is billionaire Ted <laughs> under the table? Because it's the same guy. Is it? Okay. The same guy that played Billionaire Ted. 
like, why in the fuck is this guy under the table? So they cut away, and I'm just, I'm baffled. I'm absolutely baffled. I have no idea why there was a press conference with Paisley and the artist and billionaire Ted showed up. I'm just aghast. So then they go down to the ring, and there's huge erection. And suddenly my brain started to recall. This fucking guy's pops. He's huge erections disabled grandfather do you remember this i know huge erection was talking about it here but i don't actually remember it no. I, I actually started to remember it when it happened it's horrible this is a horrible storyline here all i know is i'm watching this man who has to call himself huge erection he's cutting a promo about his pops having a metal plate in his head and crapping himself all i can think is can you imagine being a grown man and having to go out and do this shit Forget watching it. That's not happening. Can you imagine that WWE hired him to run developmental? I mean... <laughs> <laughs> the answer, Vinny, is no. I can't this, believe it. This segment was not his fault. Doesn't really... That's, avoiding your question is specific, but he was not the problem here, Brian. I'm well aware of that. Okay. So it's Lieutenant Loco versus the artist... Major guns, big spots to come to the ring. By the way, off. why wasn't it Huge Erection versus Chavo? Because Huge Erection well, was, was upset about the promo and cut the promo, and he was all angry about what happened pa to Pops. Paisley accepted the challenge, but only if it would be a title match with Lieutenant Loco. I see. I got it. Loco is the cruiserweight champion. So Major guns, big spot is to come to the ring, tear off her shirt, kick a guy in the balls. Paisley protests, so she gets kicked in the crotch instead. She sold a kick to the balls better than dudes who actually get kicked in the balls in real combat. That's actually true. And Loco wins with a tornado DDT, and Pops is about to molest Paisley, but they stop him. Yeah. A limo arrives. Ric Flair is in it, and Beth, and Reed, and Charlotte, and the other daughter there. Megan, I learned by the end of the night. Megan Flair's there. Okay, we had one of my other favorite segments. Russo is backstage, and I'll say it again. He is a great character, and every now and then he had a good idea for a segment. He's back there with these women. There's four women, and he says, I can't remember what he told them, but basically he's 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 preparing an offering for Goldberg. He's trying to He tells him them up. to do whatever it takes to make Bill Goldberg happy. Yeah. So they go into the room, and the women come in, and Russo goes up to Goldberg, and without even batting an eyelash, Goldberg is like, get these goddamn women out of here. I don't want to see these women. And Russo says, I told you guys, get out of here. And he, he boots them out. I loved that moment. That was awesome. The cat is waiting for Hulk Hogan. Hulk Hogan arrives, driving a Dodge Charger in his wrestling gear, including boots. Of course. <laughs> he just finished another shot somewhere else. Most people have not worn wrestling boots, but trust me, it would be very hard to drive a car in those. Well, that's your boots. I could drive a car in my boots. Maybe, maybe. So the cat tells Hulk he can get a title shot in 10 minutes. Hulk immediately accepts, but then Jarrett lays him out with a guitar and says the match is in a few minutes. At this point, the camera pans over to the side where Horace is lying in the rubble of a table. Okay. Russo and David Flair come out for a promo. Russo is tired of getting beat up. He vows Ric Flair will never chop him again. <laughs> this was another great Russo segment. He says, I will not be chopped. I hate you, Ric Flair. And Flair cuts his promo. He's going to take David home and... Russo wants another match, and Flair's like, you ain't going to get it, and Russo's begging for it, and finally says, Flair says, I'll make you a deal. If I beat you tonight, you retire. I'll be the boss next to Bischoff. We get along great. I'm going to take my son with him, and after we beat you, I'm going to shave your head, just like I did to sh Eric Bischoff. I'm going to shave your Yankee head, pal. And there's a pause, and Russo says, are we talking about a trim? Flair says, I'm going to retire you. I'm going to take your job. I'm going to take my son back. I'm going to shave your head and your ass. Russo says a New Yorker won't back down in front of these Richmond fairies. His words, not mine. And he says, you're on. It's a handicap match with my son. 
And Flair says, I'll go get Reed. We'll kick your ass again. And, like, it was a fun segment, but there's a couple of problems. Number one, the show reeks of desperation. Absolutely reeks of it. Number two, when did Flair ever announce he was putting his career on the line here? I didn't hear it. Did you hear it? I don't it? know. I don't know. No, the point is he didn't. But somebody was supposed to say it because that was a stipulation later on. Well, that would explain why they repeated the I'll shave your head thing 20 times. Somebody forgot a line, and so they just went back to the beginning and tried again, but they kept forgetting. They went. They said the same three things over and over and over again. Goldberg and Nash are both brooding backstage. Mm. Jeff Jarrett versus Hulk Hogan with Billy Kidman as ref. Jarrett wants a count out, but Hogan appears to fight. Totally none the worse for wear. He's fine. He's fine. Remember that whole storyline about they would never get the red and yellow off Hogan? Yes. And then he just took it off and put the Hollywood gear back on? Yes. So Kidman here is calling this first down the middle. Yeah. He's been feuding with Hogan for months. But he now he's mad at Bischoff and Jarrett and Horace because Horace, I guess, called the match clean the night before. I don't know. I'm, I was just. Well, there's that whole Kidman confused. and Tory thing as well. I guess. I keep forgetting about. So Kidman is openly helping Hulk now. He takes the chair out of Jarrett's hands, gives it to Hulk. Now Russo and Goldberg are out there. Goldberg's late breaking of the pin. I don't know what was supposed to happen with Kidman and Hogan and. Goldberg, but Goldberg spears Kidman. I don't know if he's supposed to get in the way or threaten a DQ or something, but Goldberg spears Kidman very casually throws him out of the ring. Spears Hogan hits a jackhammer through a table. GI Bro makes a save, and they come out with a stretcher for Hogan. Was there a stretcher for Horace, who was also put through a table on the show? Now, who cares about him? Yeah. Yeah, this was a complete mess, and my exact words here when Kidman helped Hogan was... I have absolutely no idea what's going on, and this fucking sucks. I miss anything? Uh, well, you missed the point of this and the value of it, but there was none. So Okay. Dallas Page cuts a promo. He is, comes out wearing a t-shirt. Motivational t speech. He comes out wearing a t-shirt that reads whatever and holding citrus in his hands. He's Orange Cassidy. So everyone told him how crazy he was to start so old. So I was talking about his friend Bischoff when Bischoff and Kim and Canyon come out. Yeah, Canyon's a bad guy now, everyone. Yeah, apparently he was faking a neck injury and hopped out of a wheelchair at the pay-per-view to beat up DDP. Yeah. Another classic angle. So Paige is rambling, repeating, repeating himself, totally disinterested. It's a terrible promo. It sucks. Says this isn't worth it, and he leaves. And Bischoff tries to rebut, but his bite won't work. Monday Actually, night, show, everybody. I actually thought that his his promo wasn't so bad. I mean, he he had he had Kimberly and Canyon both out there, and Bischoff's being all cocky, and he cuts a promo and talks about his wife never believed him as a wrestler, but she believed in him as a person, and she gave him so much, and all he wanted to do was give back, and now she's looking sad. Then he gives Canyon a guilt trip. He's the only guy he ever took under his wing. He taught him the stuff that he was taught by his mentors. And now Canyon's sad. And then finally he goes, you know what? Tanae asked me, is it worth it? And fuck, it's not worth it. This place sucks. I'm out of here. And he leaves. And now Bischoff's furious. How dare you quit? And Paige leaves and that's it. We have pics of Sting being not on fire. We are told they will not show the pics on uh, TNT where he is on fire. So remember when I said Mark Madden had highs and lows? I hope I never ever see that again. But I've got to be honest, I'm going to watch the encore just to make sure it really did. Yeah, they are so appalled that she, that uh, Sting has been burned to a crisp that they're heavily pushing the replay for you to see it. Yes. Vampiro does a promo, says he has no remorse. He wants to know who's going to hell with him. I guess this was an open challenge. Which is answered by the Kiss Demon. No. Seriously? The Kiss He's Demon? still around. And I still want to know how, of all bands, they can play Kiss on the network when they have to... They have to edit out all these other songs that merely sound like other bands. Kiss must have just given them the full rights to it. Kiss doesn't give rights to anything. Well, they did to this one, because trust me, they, they edit everything off these stupid shows. They, they edited three counts music off. They edited out the Misfits in Action song because it kind of sounds like war. Yeah. So, 
Here's the whole match. Vamp- they brawl up to the stage. Vampiro does a dive off the screen. He appears He's to- not caught. He appears to blow out his knee. He is also bleeding from the arm. The bell rings, and it ends. Yep. Steiner tells whichever freak is with him to keep an eye on this eight-year-old boy. This, I forget her name. It's the one that's not Medasia. Yeah. She fucking grabs this kid from behind. She's pawing all over him. She's, she's gro- groping his chest. I was like, Jesus Christ. The, the 2000s here. This is... Yes. Nash is still in the... Shakira is her name, isn't it? N- uh... I could have sworn it was. Maybe. Nash is still in the cop car. <laughs> Russo. <laughs> Russo is with David Gravely Flair. Gravely concerned. Russo is terrified of what might happen to him. He talked about shaving my ass, David. <laughs> yes. Like, this is awful. This is not made me want to see <laughs> Ric Flair versus D- Vince Russo, but it's funny. It is funny. It's undeniably funny. Kim and Canyon come out. Kim is plugging her own personal cologne, which costs three hundred and ninety-five dollars a bottle. I like how two segments ago they were both like really sad because because Paige had made him feel terrible about how they were as people. Now they come out, and they're totally happy. They're over it. I believe they were supposed to be fake crying, sarcastically crying before. Mm. Madden's response to Kim's outfit is just to say, "Look at that cleavage, unbelievable." See, the problem, Vinny, is Kimberly is such a horrible actor. But I, I can't tell if she's pretending to be sad or if she's or just being very bad pretending at it. to be sad. <laughs> Either way, it's sad. So Canyon says he is taking Paige's spot, his music, his wife. He's going to plug his own book. Oh, we get all the diamond cutters. He's taking back his move, the diamond cutter. He issues an open challenge, which is answered by Scott Steiner. Okay, what in the fuck happened here? Steiner is out there and he's throwing the dude around for a while and then Kim runs backstage and then Kim and Kimberly or Kim and Stacy Keebler are in the ring. Kimberly is supposed to spray cologne in her eyes, but she sprays it the wrong way. Yeah. And it's still sold. And then Kim breaks her glasses and leaves. Was there a finish here? What happened here, Vinny? Help me out. I'm <laughs> fucking o- just befuddled. The only thing you missed, Brian was that Chronic came out and we were told there's a history between Brian Clark and Positively Canyon. What? Now, I was confused then. I have been confused about this for the past three hours. As I read that line, it occurred to me, they were Wrath and Mortis. Oh. And we're supposed to remember that. Yeah, I didn't remember that. From like two years ago. Yes. Totally forgot. What a stupid show. Did I mention how glad I am this company's dead? Let's see. Flair and Reed go for a walk. Russo and David go for a walk. Pamela tries to interview Scott Steiner. Scott Steiner's gimmick is that he's a womanizer. But he's so good at womanizing that women put up with it anyway. He goes to blow off Pamela Paulshock, who is a hot blonde. But he does so in the most polite manner possible. She tries to ask this question, and he puts up his hand. He's like, Pamela, you're beautiful, but I have to take over. Like, he has more important things to worry about now than Pamela, but he also wants to keep that door open for when it's her time. So he takes the mic and then starts to scream. He's going to find Russo. He's going to find Bischoff. He's going to stick his boot so far up their ass, they won't like it. That's pretty far. (laughs) Pretty far. And then they look around and say, hey, where's Hunter? They lost the eight-year-old boy. Yeah. He didn't go far, it turns out. David Flair and Vince Russo versus Ric Flair. So Russo's running wild, or uh, Flair's running wild. He puts David in the figure four... Well, first he goes in the corner and he chops Russo, and Russo doesn't sell it. And so Flair rips his shirt off, and Russo had a chest protector on. So Flair rips it off and chops the hell out of him. I liked that. But they they did it too early. Should have built it up for later in the match. So, let's see. Uh, Flair puts David in the figure four, and then Russo begins to hit Rick with a baseball bat. Yeah. 
Reed attacks Russo. David pulls Reed off. They call in Beth Flair. They call her into the ring. They give her yet another Statue of Liberty statuette and say, break this over your husband's head. Why would she do that? Like, have I missed something here? I have no idea. It doesn't make sense. It's no. written by a dumb person. She refuses to break a statue over the head of the man who she's been standing by for months now. So Russo goes to yank it out of her hands. The statue breaks in his hands. He very quickly smashes it over Flair's head before we could notice it breaks in his hands, only he's not that fast. 14-year-old Charlotte Flair tries to make the save. Oh, my she God. She back. hit the ring of house of fire. Yes. Like, everybody talks about her appearances on Nitro, but I don't see people talking about this one. Like, this was a physical encounter. She tried to take this dude out. Finally, the last Flair, Megan, after baseball bat and statue attacks and multiple interference by security, she throws in the towel. The match is over. And the answer is like, oh, Flair's career is over now. Yeah, that was never, not one time in the promo, never did anybody announce that Flair's career was on the line, only Vince Russo's. Flair has now apparently been retired. Mm -hmm. Russo then grabs a fucking pair of, of clippers and starts to shave the head of Ric Flair. Yeah. Ric Flair has been wrestling since the early 70s. That hair, the value of Ric Flair's hair, you know what he could have made to lose his hair in Mexico, for example? Oh. No one has ever shaved his head. And here on Nitro, with no build, because not even... 30 minutes earlier, when they were building this up, did they say that Flair's hair was on the line? Only Russo's hair. They shaved his head. They shave up Reed's head. Russo celebrates. And I watched this fucking thing, and I thought, you're the dumbest motherfucker in the history of wrestling. Do you know how much money you could have made off Ric Flair's hair? And instead, because you're so goddamn stupid, you just shaved his head at random on a Nitro show. No announcement, no build, no stip announced in advance, nothing. You just did a match and you shaved the guy's head for the hell of it. I, I just, I, I, I literally could not believe my eyes. I was like, this, this is exactly why Russo was a failure. Because if you watch this segment, you can see the germ of a great idea. And if you had a guy with a clue like Vince McMahon in the 90s, he could have taken this idea and they could have made a shit ton of money off of it. But there was no Vince McMahon. There was no Jim Ross. There was no Jim Cornette. There was no WWE, WWF writing crew to, to help Russo with his stupid ideas. He just went out there and he booked this fucking ridiculous segment through millions of dollars out the window of a sinking ship, I might add, that had just hit the iceberg. This was monumentally fucking stupid. I should have done a whole chapter in Death of WCW about this segment. So, uh, I would also add that if you told me that they were not planning on shaving Reed's head and just grabbed him and started shaving a stripe in it, I believe you. Because Ric Flair was selling like death. And when they put those clippers on, on Reed's head, Flair sprung to life. And he charged at them and they fled for their lives. So who knows? Kevin Nash is let out of the car backstage and we get our main event of Kevin Nash versus Goldberg. So all the bottom of the card heels come out to watch. The filthy animals who apparently flew out for this come out on stage. And Sean Stasiak is out there. And Chuck Palumbo is out there. And they have belts around their waists. Excuse and me. It, who? As far as I can tell, your reigning world tag team champions, the best tag team in the world, is Sean Stasiak and Chuck Palumbo. Sean Stasiak and Chuck Palumbo. Huh. <laughs> that's, that's fucking really weird. That's bizarre. So they're doing this match, and Nash starts to make a comeback. Everyone hits the ring. Goldberg lays him out with a chair. Hunter is now at ringside, the eight-year-old one. Russo grabs him and make him makes him watch. I guess Nash is bleeding. 
So Steiner comes out to make the save. There was no he, title change on the pay-per-view, by the way, for the tag titles. I have no idea where or when they won those. I must have been Thunder. I guess. I guess. So you mentioned earlier when Kevin Nash was hitting cops. When Scott Steiner comes out to make the save and is just wailing these security guys. This is the most violent thing on the show. He's just ruining men. Finally, they beat him with sticks. The cat also attacks Scott Steiner. And Tony Schiavone then says the following quote, which I am not making up. We have seen a new all-time low for Nitro, which has been on the air since Labor Day of 95. Like... I mean, like I said, I didn't never got angry. I think I, I maybe just passed the point. I'm, I'm I'm not past the point yet. I'm numb to it now, but this may have been the worst one yet. The only thing we liked on this show was Russo being funny in segments that maybe should not have been funny. Do you know, Vinny, that when they've shaved Ric Flair's head and that whole angle that we just talked about a moment ago? That drew a 2.82 rating against a 5.59 rating on Raw. And do you know what was going head-to-head -head with Flair getting his head shaved that destroyed them by well over double? I, I do not. Linda's interview. Ah! <laughs> uh, sweet Jesus. <laughs> That's what beat them. My God. Yep. I don't even know what to say. <laughs> I don't know what to do with myself right now. Well, that's Linda's interview that you what made. What a stupid business. fun of. Is, uh, yeah, there you go. Well, nothing left to do but to finish this. The finishes on this show were... A decisive win in a hardcore match. Clean pin... Pinned despite interference by two women. No finish due to attack on a referee. No finish for no apparent reason. Submission due to towel being thrown in. And in the main event, no finish for no apparent reason again. <laughs> I was hoping that you would decipher what the finish of the main event was. No, there wasn't one. Because I watched it and I was really trying to figure out what happened. And I was unable to come to any conclusion. I, I, I am but a man. I cannot solve these mysteries. Yeah. Well, there you go. Nash, by the way, did this, this match in street clothes. Yes. So. Well, uh, well, he'd he been locked in the car all night. Oh, I see. So, I mean... I, I see. Well, he should have showed the, up in his gear like Hulk. He should have. Yeah. Fuck, I'm looking at my report here. I, don't, I didn't even have anything resembling a finish. There wasn't one. The show just stopped. <laughs> it, just, it just ended. There was no music. There was no bell. No one celebrated. The show just went off the air. This was a horrible, horrible, wretched Nitro. I was so angry when it was over. Like, impossibly bad. And and it, because we had to start a little earlier, to, actually we started later than usual, but I usually don't start shows this early if it's a late night show. I had to watch Nitro last night. And I watched Nitro right before I watched Raw. And, like, when I was done with Nitro, I had to start watching Raw or I would never do the show with Dave. But I had to go downstairs and I had to, like, chill out for a while. I was so ruined by that Nitro show. And then I had to immediately watch Raw. And I could tell you motherfuckers, by the way, in a million years, there is absolutely no way that modern Raw is worse than Nitro. I watched them back to back. Yes. And this Nitro was ten times worse than Raw. Ten times worse. Easy. Maybe 20 or 30. It was horrible. So anyway. All right, I'm going to bed. All right, that's it, everybody. We're going to wrap it up. Vinny and I will be back on Thursday. NXT and Superstars is back. And then uh, Sunday with NWA. And that is it from here. We'll talk to you again after a while. Adios.